Most people in America are not quite familiar with homeless or impoverishment because most people, in theory, move into a career, a job, a salary, and live in the suburbs, and they drive to places near for shopping and restaurants and other parts of our daily and weekly living and the errands that we need to run around our making a living. A lot of people will run to a shop before they go to work or drop by a place on their way home or meet their families at a place where they'll run home and pick everybody up and go out to a place where they'll wait till the weekend for those sort of shopping and those sort of family outings and family making special moments matter times. The reality is that when you start to slip in your career, when you start to recognize the oversaturation of competition, not only from seasoned, experienced men, but also from young people throwing their hat in a business ring that they really don't belong in. And I apologize for saying that. Well, it is true, there are young people, and I've met a few in their 18 to 20s that don't have the ability to go off to college or certification training, and they get themselves into groups and social networks and try to be the best man they can at their age. The truth is they have not had enough financial trouble, nor they have, and they're still probably marvelously living at home, so they have no expenditures or whatnot, but the reality is they don't really know how to relate to someone who's been seasoned in industries and really an expert in the parts of what they know. Someone who is a worldly person and someone who is a honest person will say, I can do this much, but if you're looking for those skills, you need to go see him. And this is how we use our competition to complement us. At the same time, there are other industries like real estate, mortgage, finance, and banking that can be oversaturated with qualified people and at the same time oversaturated with unqualified people, meaning brand new, off the block, brand new, out of college morons who do not regard your finances, do not regard your privacy, and do not really know how to be efficient in their jobs yet. And making a living in those industries can be marvelously difficult. On the other hand, we have people who are really good with numbers, really good with math, can do it all in their head, like my late father and one of my sisters can do that, but I'm not one of those, and I prefer to use a calculator, I prefer to have someone else check my work there, because that's never been a forte of mine. I'm not sharing that to belittle myself or humble myself, I'm sharing that to suggest that sometimes people with those skill sets of accounting and whatnot need to change industries to find new jobs and new careers that are outside their recruiters realms because you might use the same recruiter all the time to help you get a job but they might be locking you into an industry that's never going to supply you the career advancement that you need it just keeps supplying the recruiter with a new employee opportunity because every few years every six months every couple years you get moved back into the job hunt mode. It's marvelous how people can keep a job in a company for 20 years, but once they've lost that job because either their relationship timed out, they did something improper, or their employer did something like that with them, it can be more difficult sometimes to find a new job. And that is hard because we do have ageism impacting us. The reality is that once we reach the elderly stages of 50, 60, and 70, we can often be seen by companies, although inappropriately, as too old to work. While it's true that some people can go on to long-term careers if they run a family business and stay there forever, it is also true that the people that are truly successful only do that if they stay lifelong learners with me and with you. You see, you have to stay with it, you have to keep your fashion together, and you have to do things in a way that make people comfortable. At the present moment, while I'm living in the streets, I'm not wearing a jacket anymore because the one jacket that I did receive from a ministry got ruined by somebody. It's always amazing to me as a humble homeless person who runs a very modest ministry for food of people with uh, food insecurities, is that people like to play me with their pocket change and I'm not sitting here with any cup asking for that. If you want to have a conversation with me, if you need consulting, I'm happy to be paid for that. If you want to donate to my ministry because you've seen my sign that I carry with me uh, all the time, despite whether I'm working or, so, or moving towards uh, companies to talk to them, 
in a sales capacity or business development capacity for my no up and coming non for profit that I'm still testing out the lines on, then please do that. But openly, as a human being who is in poverty, what I'm absolutely amazed about is how many people will try to harm a homeless person by either lying to them about what they do for a living or playing with them or taking their things. And something that bothers me a great deal is that almost every day that I purchase some marvelous little flavor package to go in water so that I have the caffeine that my body needs and the ability to have a little sugar that helps to obviously a person with their body functioning, that each morning I wake up and someone has actually taken those out of a plastic bag that I keep them in with my sunglasses and literally taken half of them. The first question I have is why am I not waking up because I have never been such a sleeper like this. But the second thing that I'm concerned about is that these people, these immoral, illegal, unbelievable people think that they have the right to take money and food from a homeless person. At the same time, over the course of my being in Champaign and particularly being on the campus around old, ugly maintenance men, I found that I was constantly being abused by them. I would lay myself down to sleep in a place that I decided that was safe for me and I'd wake up to find my cell phone having been abused or out of my pocket or the batteries that I purchased from old cell phones that got thrown out but I kept the batteries because I knew I needed them literally stolen from me and now some of those batteries have come back and it's doubtful that they actually work they probably just traded them out for the ones they wanted I know for an absolute fact that Hispanics do that and I openly know that when I had a little hobble that I was keeping and coming and going from on a semi-regular basis to feed myself that I came back one evening after being out and some Hispanic man was asleep in my materials and asleep in my things and he totally utterly made a destruction of uh, the organization that I had there breaking televisions and other things that I had pulled from the trash that I had planned to donate to people who were impoverished it's unbelievable what immoral people will do it's unbelievable what unethical people will do it is unbelievable that there are bitches who think they have the rights to you and I cannot get over what I would typically call for my community, and I hate to say it like this, the white trash of a community that keep trying to solicit me as if a man of my age, station, and industry would be interested in that. If you wish to be neighborly, then be neighborly, but don't be talking to me like we're having a conversation already. That to me shows your drug use, and it shows me to me that you have not taken the time to refine yourself. Now, I do get information prophetically from God, and you don't have to fucking believe me, but I can tell you that God knows every human being that is in his house. And if you have the ability to mind with people, where you can ask questions and someone can respond back to you and it's proven to you every time, you better motherfucking get back in the house of God and you better pay attention to what God is telling you. But please, don't pretend that we're friends. Don't pretend that you have the right to register your friends about me or tell your people about me because I have never asked for that and I did not ask to be a public figure for you to promote as if you're my publicity agent. I did not ask for that. I might reach out to a Christian church. I might reach out to a Buddhist temple. But if I do that, that's my business. It's not yours. But when they slam down my Twitter accounts because of the liars of America, I promise you I'm going to sue each and every man that participated in that. It interfered with my right to get a job. And I am still working to earn that job. And my job is so freaking high that you will never be able to touch me because they have been paying attention. They have been paying, sending people to test me. And I am becoming a cultural asset in a different way. Now, if I say this, there'll be somebody who's gay who want to edit my videos. But what I can't stand today is watching employees of companies step outside their shop in their retail uniforms, literally sitting in products they're trying to vend, smoking. And I'm sitting there thinking, do you understand that someone might like to buy that chair and doesn't need your vegetable oil-based, whatever those cigarettes are called, soaking into that chair? At the same time, what you're preventing is the people who are actually doing what they should do in those marvelous chairs at the staple shop is sitting in them, testing them, seeing how they feel. And I see that regularly, and I can tell you that is a great way to sell a chair. Now, in life, we have moments of time to speak the truth of what's happened to us 
and several of my cell phones have been abused, broken more, and interfered with by people at night while I'm sleeping. And those things are in my side pockets for safekeeping. Now I tell this to people, and what they'll think they have the right to do is keep monkeying with me or monkeying with you. And that is a lie they've told themselves. It's an immoral act. And Jesus Christ, whether they believe in him or not, or God above all people like Odin and whatnot, are watching you going, what the fuck are you doing?